Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to Mass on this Sunday morning. This is the uh, fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time and we are now only two weeks away from the beginning of Lent. Last week we celebrated the presentation of Christ in the Temple and it was the time when we 
turn our faces away from the crib and we look towards the cross, to that great central feast of our faith, the passion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. But for the next couple of weeks, we are commissioned to go out and to spread that good news of Jesus, our Saviour, to go out to those who need our help, to need God's love in their lives and Christ's light in their hearts. Today, we are very privileged to have the Dean of St Albans, the um, uh, Geoffrey John, who is such an important figure in our church and in our diocese. This is his last Sunday with us before he takes up his appointment in Paris at St George's there. And he preaches today on the Word, the opening verses of John. In the beginning was the Word. St John, our patron, St John, our heavenly guide. So now, let us prepare to meet Jesus in his holy word and in his holy sacrament. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins and penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. As together we confess, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon you, and forgive you your sins, and bring you to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning of the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory is of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. King James I, who fancied himself as a theologian, once tried a rather warped experiment. He got hold of an orphaned baby boy just after it was born, and arranged for him to be fed and clothed and looked after, but he gave strict orders that under no circumstances should anyone ever speak to the child. This was to prove one of King James's pet theories, which was that if you didn't speak to babies in any other language, they would grow up naturally speaking Hebrew. In the event, the child grew up never to speak any language at all. Although he was well looked after physically, he eventually refused to eat, pined away and died. Words are not something we are born with. We have to learn them. If we don't, we will die, because we are social beings and we depend on communicating not just for our physical growth, but for our personal growth as well. Even if people are born deaf and dumb, they still have to learn some system of sounds or symbols in order to communicate, in order to survive. Language is one of the things that sets us apart from animals and makes us persons. There's nothing in nature that really compares with the human use of language to share our thinking with others or to reason. But that ability to reason and express ourselves, as well as being uniquely human, is also something we share with God. It's one of the things that makes us able to say that we are made in God's image, because God too is a personal being, the supremely intelligent being, who expresses himself in a variety of ways. This is what lies behind that famous opening to St John's Gospel that we hear today. John is saying that Jesus is literally God's last word, his ultimate self-expression. That's not to say that people didn't know anything about God before Jesus. Since time began, God was always trying to communicate with people. He spoke to Israel through the Law and the Prophets. He spoke to all human beings through the light of reason and conscience. He spoke through the wisdom and philosophy of all ages and all cultures. But now, John says, through the birth of Jesus, God has taken an ultimate step. He's not just sent another messenger, 
He's not just given us more words of law or wisdom or philosophy. He's given us the last word because he's given us himself. God has stepped over the gap and has expressed himself in an ultimate way by actually becoming one of us. Now, you might say, many have, this doesn't make sense. How can Jesus be completely human and yet God at the same time? Surely to be human and to be God are opposites. Well, no, they are not. After all, we say God made us in his own image, which means that God and we have a lot in common. We have language to reason and think and communicate. We have a conscience and a free will to choose right or wrong. And above all, there's the fact that we are persons and we are capable of loving other persons. All of these things we have in common with God. And all those things are included in what John means by the word logos, the word. Actually, word is not a very good translation of the Greek word logos. The logos is, is more like John's shorthand way of describing the whole package of stuff that God and we have in common. And the logos is perfectly seen in the one individual who is both God and human. Jesus Christ. When we say that Jesus is God, of course there is a difference between God as we usually think of God and God as we see him in Jesus. When he was on earth, Jesus was not all-powerful or all-knowing or infinite. As St. Paul says, Jesus emptied himself of those attributes of God. He left them behind in order to be born as a real man. Jesus was a real baby, and a real little boy, and a real man. He had all the limitations of being a human being. And yet he was still divine, because at all the stages of his life, his relationship to God the Father remained unbroken. At every stage, he contained as much of divinity as humanity is capable of containing. And at the same time, he showed us that we are capable of becoming divine ourselves. There's a very important passage in John's Gospel in chapter 10. Jesus is talking about being one with God. And some Pharisees who hear this want to stone him for blasphemy because he seems to be making himself equal with God. And Jesus' reply to them is very significant. He quotes one of the Psalms to them, Psalm 80, in which God says, I have called all of you gods, even though for the moment you die as men. So look, says Jesus to the Pharisees, if God can say to us, you are all gods, why do you want to stone me? I'm only claiming to be what all human beings can be, provided your relationship to God the Father is restored. Jesus is actually saying, we can all be gods. That's what John's gospel is telling us. Now, in the Western church, we don't often talk about becoming divine. I suppose we think it sounds a bit pretentious, not humble enough. But in the Eastern Orthodox Church, the normal word that they use for salvation is theosis, divinization. That's what the whole process of the Christian life is about, about becoming divine. Okay, we may not look very divine yet. There's a long way we all have to go. But that is where we are going, to become what Jesus already is, perfectly human and therefore perfectly divine, because perfectly united in love with God the Father. You might have noticed uh, at the Eucharist that when the priest prepares the chalice, we pour a drop of water into the wine and mutter a prayer. It's known traditionally as the secret prayer because it's meant to be said silently by the priest alone. But it's a prayer that nicely sums up what I've been saying. 
by the grace of God, and especially by the sacrament of communion, we are, unlikely as it may seem, becoming divinized, being made fit for final union with God. So here it is. I'm going to finish by praying that secret prayer aloud. Lord God, by the mystery of this water and wine, may he who humbled himself to share in our humanity raise us up to share in his divinity, who lives and reigns one God for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father Jeffrey, for preaching for us. And our prayers, our love and our blessing go out to you and Father Grant as you serve our Lord in Paris. So now, let us confess our common faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to our most heavenly Father in prayer, in the name of Jesus his Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ever-living God, our Creator and Redeemer, with a word you created all things, and so we pray that you will hear the words of your children as we pray. Giving thanks to you for your Church, the world and its peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we pray for the worldwide Christian Church in all its wonderful diversity. We pray especially for those churches who meet together in difficult and dangerous circumstances. And at this time of the pandemic, for all those churches who cannot meet in person, but only online. May they feel your abiding presence to uphold their courage and strengthen their faith. As we pray for our parish here in Watford, we bring before you all those who lead and take part in our services, those who visit and pray for the sick and bereaved, and those who carry out the maintenance and administration of our buildings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world and its peoples with all their needs, questions and longings. So often we struggle to understand the reasons behind things like coronavirus. And yet we know that in the midst of such events, your love is shown in the acts of bravery, selflessness and compassion which follow. We pray for all who suffer in such circumstances and for those who are tasked with providing medical and community support and eventually for those who work to bring vaccinations to ease us out of lockdown and to start us on the long task of recovery that will surely follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our church community 
that each of us might make use of our individual talents, enabling us all to flourish as witnesses to the one body of the church. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everyone we meet, whether in person or online. We pray for our school, the staff, governors and children. May they be blessed with your love now and always. We pray for all in education, for those homeschooling at this time, and for those who are feeling the isolation of not being together. May we all know we are always under the shadow of your wing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those in need in our community, the sick and the dying, the elderly, the housebound, and those in care homes, hospitals and hospices, and especially for the work and devotion of those who care for them. We thank you for carers, whose love and compassion bring both material and spiritual comfort at times of need. We raise before you now those for whom prayer has been requested. We pray especially for those who are suffering illness of body, mind or soul, including David Handley, Sharon, Frank White, Jeff Wilson, Roland Hill, Melanie Wills, Ham Fernando, Jane Sabor, Mike Morris, Julie Saviour, Kelvin Hill, Daphne Keller, Mike Jones, Rosemary Willis, Liam Bright, Evelyn Cooper, Jeff Sawyer, Helen Roach, Roxana, Joy Hurst, Dorothy Atwood, Pat Pryor, Paul and Maria Fuentes, Val and Albert Sanders, Julia Adair, Robert Pryor, and any others known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, be close to, close to those who feel the pain of grief at the loss of a loved one, whether recent or as each anniversary passes. Help us to support all those who mourn with our prayers, with words of comfort and with practical help as they struggle to come to terms with their loss. We remember all those who have died recently, Pamela Chapman, Captain Sir Tom Moore, and for people who have died as a result of the coronavirus, together with those whose anniversary falls at this time. Reginald James, once vigor vicar of our parish, John Bennett, Eileen Mann, Derek Whitethread, Lucinda Keith, Kitty Miller, and any others known to us. Rest eternal grants to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us during the coming week to live the good news. Give us the will to each day to live in life eternal. Let our citizenship be in heaven with the whole company of the redeemed and with countless angels praising, worshipping and adoring him who sits upon the throne for ever and ever. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, we meet in his name and we share his peace. And the peace of the risen Lord be always with you.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, which is both yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Heavenly Father, we pray that your holy angel may take these gifts to your altar in heaven, accept them with the love and the praise that we give you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His die and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you forever and sing. through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine out poured may become for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Mary, the great and glorious Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, St. John, our patron, St. Alban, and all your saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus has given us the confidence to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share 
in one breath. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Let us pray. God, our Creator, 
By your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise, and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we, who have been nourished at your altar on earth, be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross, and enjoy the delights of eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please do join us for tea and coffee on Zoom uh, once we've finished, and the link should uh, appear before you uh, shortly. Um, uh, I hope you are all keeping well, again, wherever you are in the world. Uh, here in the United Kingdom, do stay in. Remember, it is important that we uh, get on top of this virus. If you're called for your vaccination, please, please go. If you're worried about not hearing anything about your vaccination, do contact your GP, or um, you could give me a call if you're really worried and I can see if I can help you. We're preparing for the AGM, uh, which will take place on Lent 5. I want you all to start thinking if you would like to uh, be part of the church offices. We need um, one, three, uh, I think three people to join PCC. Um, if you're interested in the church warden's role or treasury, uh, anything, uh, please do think about it, pray about it, and give me a call. And uh, we can talk about what you may be able to do to help in church. Again, keep safe, and uh, it will be lovely to see you at coffee. We bow your heads as we pray for God's blessing. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge, in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.